Hi, I'm Jeremiah Prophet, and welcome to another episode of Prophet's Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. Unfortunately, Shandra's not with us today, so to keep you from having to listen to me the whole time, let's go out to the shop and check in with some of the guys and see what they're up to. When we're done with that, I'm really excited to show you this 1964 Patina Resto Mod Land Cruiser that we just finished. It is amazing. The plant has got a lot of rust repair going on with this one. I mean, it's just, it, you fixed a lot of it already, but you can see you know, in areas like this where there's cancerous rust that's developed, and so we need to replace the, the structural member underneath, plus the floor piece itself, plus this structural member on top, or at least patch it all up. Yeah. All the way through the back here, that's all gonna be, have to be addressed. How does something like this happen? Must have been the 350 they were hauling around in the back of there. It dented the bed. I mean, there's a there should be a bed behind that, so it dented the bed so hard from the inside that the bed beat the cab up. Oh yeah, this is good stuff. <laughs> How long before this one's done? I'd say probably, uh, a few more days, I'll have the rockers and everything. He didn't mean the whole car. Yeah. He did not just, mean the restoration. Just this. <laughs> just this. Just this part. And then we're going to tackle some of the other parts. Yeah. Thanks, Clint. Oh, yeah. You're a soldier. Clint's right. a soldier. <laughs> this vehicle, we got to step back and look at this from the outside. This has been uh, shown a lot in a lot of different uh, places. It's been at SEMA a couple of times. It went to Riyadh for the Global Auto Salon. Uh, but we've made some changes to it that are really cool. So let's check them out. Truman, the Basset Hound, isn't the only thing around here that's been chopped. Believe it or not, we chopped the top on this FJ40. I didn't think we would ever do that in a million years. But when I first built this as a rock crawler, I wanted it to have a squashy appearance and uh, make it look to have a really low center of gravity. It already has a low center of gravity, but we wanted it to look even lower. So I chopped the windshield, I think an inch and a quarter, out of the windshield frame in height. And I didn't think it was ever going to be more work than that because it's was never gonna have a top or doors, uh, but that changed. Now this Land Cruiser is getting ready to go live its new life with a new owner, and he asked for a soft top and doors, which meant we had to uh, chop the window, chop the window area of the door down, the inch and a quarter to match, and uh, then we shortened an aftermarket um, soft top frame kit uh, from Real Steel Cruiser Parts, and we made the top custom. But uh, anyway, it's actually a super cool look, kind of an armored truck. Uh, hard to see it from up close, but from a further away shot, I think you'll be able to tell this cruiser is a little shorter than the other ones. So we made a few other changes to this FJ40 for the new owner. We lowered the stance a little bit and went with a slightly smaller tire than it used to have. These new 37 inch Maxxis Razor MTs help this vehicle drive on the road a lot better than the 40s that it had before. Another interesting change to this Land Cruiser is that we actually removed the 3FE that we built for it originally and installed a 2F in its place. That way the vehicle doesn't rely on any computer technology to run. The 2F was made into the A440 automatic that we originally had in the vehicle with the 3FE and that made for some interesting challenges with the throttle and kickdown cable linkage so that the older engine would work with the newer transmission. All in all, this is still one of my favorite Land Cruisers of all time. You're making me nervous? Yeah. It's not like you're holding glass. I know. I've never done this before either. No? No. That, that's my first one. That's your first Land Cruiser back door window or first window ever? First window ever that I broke in. What? You've been true. building cars in Baghdad. I have. Really? But you, you always had so many minions to put your windows in for you? Well, usually our customers uh, would do it themselves. Customers would come put in their own windows? No, after we get into the car. Oh, they, yeah. They'd have it done. Sorry, I should clarify. Oh, really? Yeah. That's not here. We, we're a full service shop here. Wow. Here we install your windows for you. That wasn't as fancy. <laughs> <laughs> here at Resurrection Land Cruisers, we install your windows for you. Just cleaning it and prepping it. Just for that, 76 that you're tearing down? Uh, yes, most of all of it is, yeah. Stand on top of it. So yeah. every single? So every single bolt, 
scrubbed and washed off and blown off and dried. So it's nice and clean. This one isn't that clean, but. Tell me about what you soak them in. Um, first, if there's any paint or um, stuff like that on, we soak them in a chemical dip that gives us, like, just eats it all off within an hour or two. Actually, it's pretty sweet. And then uh, it's all um, it's something called uh, evaporust, which then eats all the rust and all the grease and all the stuff off it, all the zinc, and it makes it look nice and bare. So then we can get a good zinc coat on it. Every single bolt. Every bolt. Every bolt. Thousands. Thousands of them. Yeah, every part, every yep. clamp, every hose. So yeah, it's good stuff. Super fun. <laughs> You could go clean windows with Nick. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Go buff windows. Yeah. <laughs> so what Eric was working on are the bolts and fasteners for this cruiser right here. It's a 1976 in here for a stage two restoration. And it's actually a crazy amount of work. Uh, keep disassembling, keeping track of all of that, restoring all those bolts, and then making sure they all go back in the same place. It's part of the art that goes on back here in the body shop. Um, one thing that's they have to keep a mind on that's super tough is if they break a bolt, strip a bolt, if there's a damaged bolt or an aftermarket bolt or a bolt that's not supposed to be here anywhere upon disassembly, they have to go seek the right bolt out and then restore that bolt to go in with its mates so that the thing can be finished uh, and reassembled with all Toyota parts. So that's why like this strike plate right here, one of those bolts is missing that one's probably in process and that one the head stripped trying to get it out in fact that's not even really a factory bolt somebody else had put that in there so i'm sure that eric located the correct hardware and it's in there getting restored let's go look at some of the zinc boxes that have zinc bolts in them that are done we re-zinc a lot of fasteners that aren't even for customers we, we throw um, extra parts in these bins that we call wishful zinking and uh, and then we have those processed so we have extra parts around uh, in the event that we're reassembling a cruiser let's go find something more productive to talk about just because your dad is a tv repairman and has an ultimate set of tools doesn't mean you can fix it we don't like to draw attention to the negative but we love these vehicles so much sometimes we just have to point out things that weren't done right so that we can try to prevent things from happening to Land Cruisers in the future or any vehicle for that matter that should have been done differently. So we were introducing a new segment called Stop It. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. So today's Stop It is about wiring harnesses. And I'm gonna use this steering column to illustrate the wiring harnesses. And I know I'm gonna sound uh, hypocritical with this Stop It because on this Land Cruiser that we just featured, we showed you that we used a Flaming River steering column or an I Did It steering column is about the same thing. And when you do that, we use a aftermarket wiring harness like a painless wiring harness. The stop it though is stop using those kind of wiring harnesses in your FJ40. Unless you're using a GM style column like this that integrates with the turn signal switch, with the wiper switch, with the ignition switch in some cases, those kinds of aftermarket wiring harnesses, they don't work. They don't plug into anything. They don't control circuits the same way. The fuse boxes don't mount up right. They're a mess when you try to put them in an FJ40. Short of your wiring harness being chopped up into one inch long pieces, it's restorable. Fix your FJ40 wiring harnesses. If you can't do it, find somebody to help you do it for you. At least don't throw them away, send them to us. Uh, because the painless wiring harness thing, it's not working out. It's not working out for most people. So stop it. Stop it! Stop it! You can tell this FJ40 is getting close to being done. And uh, don't worry, we will feature this vehicle maybe two episodes from now when it is completely done. But um, super cool body off, uh, stage three restoration, Cummins R2.8, extended wheelbase, leather, AC, Retro Stereo, Dakota Digital, our custom bumpers, all the cool stuff. Look forward to this one coming up soon. So I, I was trying to fix my drone and
and um, which I should have just let Nate Jordy fix. And uh, <laughs> the screws that hold the drone together are minuscule. And, and so, I mean, I was just getting a headache like from squinting. So Shander went and bought me my first pair of um, spectacles, magnifying spectacles. Yeah. Spectacles. Yeah. And then I got her copious amounts of crap the entire time I was using them. Yeah, yeah. And then Eddie heard about it. I think my wife called him. Oh, and he sent me this like eight and a half by 11 sheet, uh, plastic magnifying glass in the mail. Just to make fun of <laughs> yeah. So these engines and stands are all going to go on display in the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, they're going to have um, just about all the engines that were available in domestically sold uh, Land Cruisers, um, all the way up through the newest, the 5.7, uh, you can get the new 200 series, and uh, all the way back to the oldest 1F, so it'll be a real neat way to go there and, and learn about the engines uh, on display at that facility, and if you haven't been there, it's, uh, it's a happy place, it's full of Land Cruiser magic. I had to go put on my old school anchors or t-shirt to talk about this uh, Patina Restaurant 1964 FJ40 that we built. Um, a little bit about the idea of a Patina Restaurant because I know that some people don't quite get it, but uh, you know the idea is people love the look of a Patina vehicle. They love how old school it looks. Problem is most of the time the look is also associated with a bunch of body damage and rust that happened. It'd be hard to find a vehicle that had patinaed completely without rusting and without getting dense and without people modifying the body in some way. So when you build something like this, you have to start with a vehicle that looks really cool to begin with, but then you have to come up with a plan to refinish the vehicle, um, in this case pretty extensively, and I'm gonna let Matt talk about that a little bit later. But this vehicle has been about half repainted, uh, maybe a little bit more than half, and um, just to look old, but all the rust has been fixed, all the body damage has been fixed, the body's even been modified in a couple of places, and then we did the steps that we needed to do to make it look old again. So probably the most unique part about this vehicle is actually the chassis and suspension. Because of the high pinion front end, full floating rear end, and modern disc brakes, we chose a set of 70 series axles to fit under this FJ40. In the front, we built a custom three-link suspension that sort of emulates an 80 series front suspension and the same suspension that would have been on the 70 series truck that these axles came out of. And in the rear, we built a completely custom four-link suspension. For shocks, we chose Bill Stein 8125 coilovers. And the entire undercarriage of this vehicle is as state-of-the-art as you could expect under a 1960 64 FJ40 like this. So we chose this particular FJ40 for this build just because the front clip of this thing. I mean, look how gorgeous it is, the way the hood, the bib, and the bezel all work together. Uh, the the bib itself has actually been repainted because it had some rust damage, but the bezel is as it was from the factory, and so is the hood. Um, also up here on the front of the Land Cruiser, we've got one of our factory replica winch bars, uh, made to look old of course, to support the rebuilt, uh, used but rebuilt, 8274 winch. Uh, classic worn winch that looks so great on these. And then you'll also see a couple of other modern features up here, uh, the rigid LED headlights and Saginaw power steering. Now let's look under the hood. To complement the modern suspension that we put under the vehicle, we decided to use a Cummins R2.8 and a five-speed uh, overdrive transmission to power the vehicle. That way, the engine transmission complements the suspension and this thing is very, very drivable. As you guys know, we love the Cummins R2.8 for a lot of reasons and this is the second to most recent example um, of one of the installs in one of our builds. So there's actually three modifications to the body of this FJ40 that I want to talk about. First one's pretty simple. Uh, we changed the door tops and the tops of the doors. As you guys know, if you um, have an old FJ40, the old vent wings, which they call bug catchers, open sort of out and forward. And uh, they were kind of a nightmare uh, to keep quiet when you're driving. So we went ahead and changed the tops of the doors out to a little bit newer style with a conventional vent wing. And then we also moved the wheelbase back like we do in so many of our builds, um, three and a half inches. So we've taken the original wheel well and moved it back in this uh, panel here. So to accomplish that, we just built the suspension um, a little bit longer, setting the axle back about three and a half or four inches, and then just moved the factory wheel well back. We do that all the time. So the last modification to the body, even though it's a small one, if you remember these corrugated tops, or if you're familiar with them, 
Um, there's nothing to attach them to the top of the windshield frame and just a little piece of weather stripping is there to keep wind from coming up into the cab and, and creating a ruckus in there. So we added um, the uh, metal support, fiberglass to metal, top to windshield, uh, bracket, whatever you want to call it, from a later FJ40 to the top of this so that it, and then we added nuts, of course, to the windshield frame so the top had a secure place to bolt on. That and the vent wing modification make this actually pretty quiet to drive, which is a lot nicer than they would have been in 1964. So Jeremiah already told us how we've done some modifications to this tub. We fixed some rust. We've moved the wheel wells back. Um, I'm going to explain to you the process we use to make the um, repaired areas look just like the original patina areas. And what we do is we uh, first take a look at the vehicle and identify what colors you can see visible on these patina um, panels. And you take a look at it real close and what you see is um, a ruddy brown primer, which is the first layer of primer. And then you've got a gray, like a light gray primer that goes on top of the red and then you've got your blue paint. Uh, so once we've identified that, then we uh, very diligently match all of these colors as closely as we can and apply them to the repaired areas in the same process, same layer. So we've got red, we've got gray, and then we've got the blue, which we've actually washed out a little bit with some white to emulate the UV um, effect that happens to the paint over the years being out in the sun. Uh, once we've got the panels painted and we use a, a bunch of various techniques to age the paint, uh, to age the paint, to create the patina. Um, uh, some of those processes are Scotch-Brite. Uh, we can use some steel wool. Sometimes we'll uh, dent it and just lightly scratch chip with a chain or a uh, owl, scratch all or screwdriver. You know, we've used some various techniques to make these panels look old again. And once it's all kind of matching and flows together, then we're finished with it. And one more point we want to make uh, real quick is that we do not clear coat any of these panels once we're finished with the patina process. We leave them just as they are so that they will continue to patina, continue to age, and there's nothing unnatural about the panel. Uh, the one exception to that is the top here, this roof. Uh, we go ahead and lay a um, couple good coats of matte clear on that, and that's to provide uh, durability for that fiberglass and to provide a waterproof surface. So other differences inside of this FJ40, I'm sitting on a pair of uh, leather bucket seats from a 73 through 78 FJ40, and you can see that we retrofit the floor pan to take a set of original mounts from uh, 73 through 78, so that looks very OEM. Got rid of the toolbox, of course, under the driver's seat. And then, of course, in the back, we've got a best top fold and tumble seat reupholstered in the same leather. The last two features that we added to the interior of this FJ40, of course, the Tuffy box that we've modified, uh, made it a little bit more custom. And then for safety, we added a set of three-point retractable seat belts on some custom brackets right here on the top. And we did something unique with the switches and knobs on the dashboard of this, and that'll be this week's quality spot. These early FJ40 dashboards definitely looked old school. And the factory knobs for the wipers and headlights were different than pretty much any other FJ40 before or afterwards. We wanted to keep that look original, so we 3D printed a set of knobs for the light switch and also the AC controls so that they worked out well with the factory wiper switch. So thanks for watching this episode of Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. As always, check out all of our social media platforms. On Instagram, we are at Pro Cruiser. On Facebook, we're uh, Resurrection Land Cruisers. And the website is resurrectionlandcruisers.com. And don't forget to share this uh, video if you like it. And uh, watch our whole YouTube series. There's so much Land Cruiser content um, you can watch for days. Um, thanks again for watching. Ten points to Roy. It's all ball bearings these days. Ten, ten points to Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, I'm more of a Slytherin kind of guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what the S on the jacket's for. Yeah. Slytherin coat. Luckily, we have a cool boss who gave us all these little booby traps, so we've been booby trapping each other's boxes and it's tons of fun. You can have it every day in the bathroom every day door. Someone opens the door and goes, Pow! Yeah. Yeah. It scares <laughs> Jenny to death. Yes, she almost she jumped out of her chair one day. That's yeah. Really funny. yeah. Co -ho it's my co host. This is your co host. There you go. Yeah. Ready and action. Hi, I'm Jeremiah Prophet, and this is our stand in guest co host, Caesar, and welcome to another Resurrection Land Cruisers. Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeremiah Prophet, and this is my uh, stand-in guest co-host. He's leaving now. <laughs> Episode car, heart, coat, cruiser. <laughs> God dang. <laughs> okay. Caesar's bad luck. He's out. He's out.